Hi, I'm Seth. Hi, I'm Erica, and welcome to the fifth episode of Food Finders. Today, we're going to be doing something different. We won't be finding five of the same dishes. We'll be going to a specific area, Katong, to find five food places. Katong is historically where the Peranakan settled down in Singapore, so the place is very heavily influenced by Peranakan culture. So we won't be talking about laksa today because we already did a laksa episode, but there's going to be other great places in Katong that you can eat at. Let's go! <laughs> So we're here at Baba Chu's Bar and Eatery. This place used to be uh, purely Peranakan. So they've changed the concept into a more mod Singaporean style to cater to a wider audience. Today we'll be trying the chicken rendang lasagna. Here we have the Ha Cheong Kai chicken with Wa Keloa waffle topped with uh, two sunny side up eggs. This Ha Cheong Kai and Wa Keloa waffle seems to be a twist on chicken and waffles. Yeah. But this is like the, the Asian, yeah, Asian version. version. Right, <laughs> try to uncover the Ha Cheong so Kai. So cute, they're hiding under oh. the Egg. The calamansi and maple, maple syrup. syrup with a little bit of chili. Um, so that's the sauce that they drizzle over it. Have you eaten it already? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't want to wait for you. I quite like the hajong kai. It's like small pieces, more like, mm. like a popcorn chicken. It's very hard to get exact wakaloa flavor when you combine everything. But like I think if you eat it by itself, you can get this that unique nutty flavor combined with the the sourness coming from the sauce. And that works really well. For me, it's too sour. But if you like sour and tangy oh. flavors, then I think you might like it. The lasagna looks like a regular lasagna, but what's interesting about it is that instead of the normal like, minced beef, this one has chicken rendang inside. You can really smell the strong... Okay, smell the rendang. It's so fragrant. I like this. I would never think of mixing chicken rendang and lasagna together, but I think that was a really like clever idea. Surprisingly, it works well with cheese. This is made with chicken, so it's more accessible to those that... That don't eat beef. So for dessert, we have a kueh durian, which is actually kueh dada with durian mousse and a scoop of gula melaka ice cream. Mm. Not a fan of the durian mousse though. How do you feel about the kueh dada? Um, feels like there's more kueh than like filling. Um, for me, I feel like the durian mousse is very strong. I actually can't really taste the kueh dada as much. It kind of overpowers the, the coconut. But I still think it tastes good. Feels like, like there's a lot of things happening here. It really might be okay, but yeah, yeah it just feels too, ma too many things happening on this plate. I would give this a 3.5. I think some elements in terms of fusion works pretty well, but I guess not every dish complemented each other. So for me, I'd give this a rating about 3 upon 5 because like the chicken lasagna was the best dish for me. I think it was really clever. All right, let's head on to the next place. We're here at Beach Road Prawn Me. Lots of people come here and I've been here personally myself over for the weekend, you queue something from like 30 minutes to an hour. A very typical neighborhood shop house doesn't look like much, but you will be amazed at the prawn noodle. There's also a very famous ngoh hiang right beside it. When people come here for the prawn noodles, they also get the ngoh hiang. So I've never been here before and I'm really, really excited because people have been saying this place is so famous, so popular. We got the jumbo bowls. This jumbo bowl costs $12. Their small bowl is $6 and their medium bowl is $9. So you can either get purely just prawn, prawn noodles. Like mine. Yep, or you can get prawn and pork ribs. This bowl is pretty impressive because I think the prawns are quite large. The smaller bowls from my memory, they use smaller prawns. These are like huge as um, huge ass prawns that you get. All right, we're gonna try the soup. This is like a mix of uh, prawn heads and pork bones. I find this soup really good. I think it's a good balance of natural sweetness from the prawn shells in the broth. Very flavorful. I cannot, I'm such a loser. Like I can't my chopsticks. With my chopsticks. I like it. The noodles are very QQ. So I managed to like peel the prawn with my chopsticks from the shell. Skills. Shows the freshness of the prawn. I could do it like, I don't know about Erica. You can I try. can't. I can't. See, I'm sure you can. It's so easy. It's so easy to come out. Oh my god, oh my god, I'm doing it. I did it. You did half of it. Okay, just gonna use the hands. Okay. Straight up use my hands. Very fresh, very bouncy. It's just something about like larger prawns then yeah, have more flavor, more texture, more things to bite. Okay, let's try the pork ribs. It falls off the bone, but the, the star is still definitely the prawn. I think it adds a bit more variety rather than just you know having a whole bowl of prawns. The Ngoh Hiang here, you can pick uh, your ingredients. So what she's having is like their homemade uh, prawn cracker. Then you have the Ngoh Hiang, you have the fish fillet, century egg, uh, seaweed chicken. Do you eat the century egg just like that? You do with the ginger. I can't. Oh, okay, fine, fine. It's a preserved duck egg. Oh. 
Oh, I'm quite good. Oh, it's yummy. I was really scared because normally century eggs are so strong in flavor, but along with the ginger, I think it evened it out pretty good. Even though the place looks really simple, the food here is really delicious. Like the food speaks for itself, the lines speak for themselves. It's definitely a five out of five. You know, if you're worried about price, it, you might be a little put off for two huge prawns and uh, quite a generous serving of really delicious prawn meat. I think, I think the twelve dollars is quite worth it. I would rate this probably a four. Like a 4 out of 5. Why? Why? What's wrong? What are you missing? Why not 5 out of 5? I've had a lot of prawn noodles. I've had like... Better prawn noodle than this? Like, like blow what? your mind kind of prawn really? noodle. I think the price is justifiable. Prawns are not cheap. Especially prawns of this size. Definitely try the ngohiang when you're here as well. It is part of the experience. Alright, let's go to the next stop. So we're here at Simpopo. Simpopo brand is very heavily influenced by the heritage that's here. So this is kind of like a modern take on the Peranakan influence that is so prevalent in this area. It's more of a modern Singaporean taking traditional dishes and really just elevating it to the next level. Okay, so this is the Simpopo Nasi Lemak for two. This is at $28. I like that there's a huge variety of things that really plays homage to what the, the classic Nasi Lemak is. Here we have the Maling Crisp, the Ha Chong Kai, the Pork Belly, the Sotong Balls, and the rojak, the potatoes in curry. I really like that they try to keep to very classic brands. The Spam chips, they use specifically the Maling brand of uh, luncheon meat or Spam. So the pork belly is marinated with a fermented tofu, it's called lam yu. The curry is a bit different. Usually you have like boiled potatoes, but this one they are actually using fried potato slices. So the rice, they actually make it the traditional way as well. But the new and interesting thing that they added in is the onsen egg with caramelized onion on the side. Okay, let's try the crisp. It's like super crispy. So you can see how thin they actually sliced it to achieve this kind of texture. I love ha chong kai. You get a lot of flavour in, in the flesh. So it's not just like an outer coating mm, that yeah. has the ha chong kai flavour. So it's really gone into the flesh. Oh my god, I like this. I really, really like the curry. I think the rempa is done really nice. I like that they use like fried potatoes. It's an interesting twist. Delicate coconut flavour to the rice. It's really fragrant. It smells really good. So the next dish we're trying is the crab bihun. The interesting ingredient that they have in this broth is actually salted egg, which adds more uh, depth. So we're gonna mix it up. Yes. We're gonna low he. Hmm. And a lot of salted egg. It's actually a lot heavier than I imagined it would be. It's slightly salty, so you need to have like a good helping of uh, bihun to go with it. I mean, I like that you don't have to peel yeah. the crab. Yeah. If you love crab bihun, then I think you'll like this dish. For heavier flavours. And for dessert, we have the gula malaka jelly with their coconut mix and also gula malaka pearls inside. It looks so pretty. It looks it's like so a, pretty. Like I don't want to eat it. <laughs> Seth is a bit cooler. He said it looks like amber, like the yeah. gemstone. And I said, what do you say? It looks like it soba. It looks like soba. Uh, back in the day, Fry Shop coolers would actually sell jelly out of their little carts. For the Simpopo version, they add in gula malaka as well to add more depth and flavour to the jelly. And they also top it off with fresh gula malaka. So sad. I have, I have to break it. It's so pretty. Okay. Yummy. Wow, I need to expand my vocabulary on delicious. Yeah, what hit me? was actually the coconut cream. It's not overly sweet as well. Just wanna just wanna <laughs> add that in there. I'm really impressed with the jelly because I'm not really like a jelly dessert kind of okay. person. Yeah but this is so easy to eat. Yeah you like inhale the entire jelly no time. I would definitely give Sin Bobo a four out of five. Out of all the three dishes, I liked all of them. So I'm gonna give this a 4.5. It's very interesting to see this modern interpretation of you know Peranakan food and uh, mod Singapore cuisine. Okay, so we're gonna go find more food now. So we're here at Five Star Hainanese Chicken Rice. So what's mm. so special about Five Star Hainanese Chicken Rice is that they actually use kampung chicken. The live kampung chickens are brought to Singapore from Malaysia. They were saying that it's actually a healthier alternative to the regular chicken. Of course, chicken rice is never gonna be like 100% healthy, but it's definitely a little bit healthier because like it has lesser fat. One set costs six fifty for the chicken rice. Six fifty sounds a tad high, but considering that they are using kampung chicken, which is actually more expensive because they use kampung chicken, which is leaner, uh, so you don't get as much oil that goes into the rice as well. For the rice, I can't really taste the chicken stock that much. It's just a slight hint. The breast meat for kampung chicken is supposed to be juicier than like regular 
chickens. I'm typically not a fan of chicken breasts because it's so it's dry. dry. This chicken breast doesn't feel as dry. You get a lot more robust flavor from the chicken, la, but like the, really the downside is uh, it's not as fat. Actually, to me, the regular chickens are juicier, but you get more chicken flavor, la, like not as much as lost during the cooking process. I like the chili. Oh yeah, yeah, damn spicy. So spicy. Go easy on the chili. It's like a low-fat version of chicken rice. Mm. So I would give this place a 3 out of 5. If you're looking for a healthier option, then this chicken rice will be good for you. It's leaner, less fatty. So I'm gonna go with a 3.5. Credit due for being healthier. There's more flavor in the kampong chicken. The healthiness is a secondary thing to me. So I do prefer like a bit more fats in my chicken. Okay, let's hop on to the next stop. So we are at Birds of Paradise. This is a super popular gelato spot and on the weekends the queue like goes out of the store. They use a lot of botanical flavors, herbs, spices that are not commonly seen. What makes their waffle cone special is that it's thyme infused. For me, I just wanted to try it without the cone. If you're here, you should buy the cone. Don't listen to them. You can actually smell the thyme uh, when they bake the waffle cone in store. So the smell really just wash through everywhere. So for a single scoop, it is $5 for the cup and $6 for the cone. The one buck for the cone basically. I am having the white chrysanthemum and she has the gya I can't pronounce it, really, really, really like, cannot even pronounce it. Sorry, how do you it? pronounce the chocolate? Uh? And I have the fancy okay. schmancy midnight oh. genduya. I really yes. hope it's good because actually this was Seth's recommendation to yes. try this flavor. Okay, it's not bad. I have white chrysanthemum. Because the white chrysanthemum has cocoa nibs. Is it cacao? Cacao nib. Cacao. It has a bit more texture or dimension to the ice cream. It's very rich. It doesn't feel gelat for some reason. The other gelatos I've tried, right, when it comes to richer flavors like chocolate, it's usually it very thick. You don't get sick of eating it. Like, so like, you can just yeah. you know finish the entire scoop of ice cream. Highly recommend. <laughs> I would give this place a 4 out of 5 because I love ice cream slash gelato. This is like a 100% hit for me. 5 upon 5, we'll come back again. <laughs> Alright, so we come to the end of today's episode. I think my favorite has to be Sinpopo. Mostly because it has a wide variety from main dish to dessert to snacks. I feel that they really hit the mark. The Promi place, I gave it a 5 and Sinpopo, I gave it about like a 4. It's just like the prawn mee itself, I would give it a 5 out of 5. But in terms of more variety, then that's why I would still choose mm -hmm. Simpopo. Obviously, the only place I gave a 5 on 5, I would have to recommend Birds of Paradise for their all-natural gelato. Alright guys, thanks for watching. Let us know in the comments below which area you'd like us to see next. And don't forget to subscribe. Bye! Bye.